Welcome into press coverage. Dan Hope joined by Andy Anders on a big day for the Ohio State men's basketball team as Ohio State landed a commitment from former Kentucky center Aaron Bradshaw, who was the number four overall prospect in the composite rankings by 24-7 Sports for the 2023 recruiting class. Andy, anytime you can land a guy with that kind of recruiting pedigree as a top five overall prospect in the country, especially considering that was just one year ago. That's certainly a big win. Yeah, massive, massive pickup here for Jake Diebler and continues what's been a very big run of momentum for him on the recruiting trail, getting Michi Johnson Jr. to come back to Ohio State, landing Michi's cousin Marcus Johnson, a five-star prospect in the 2026 class. And uh, this addition now, Bradshaw really completes the front court for Ohio State, at least the bigs that they're going to want to add uh, in the transfer portal. You might get someone on the wing who's more of a four, but in, in terms of down low, him and Felix Akpara make a great one-two punch there at center. Not exactly sure how the minutes are going to work between those two. You would think Felix is returning as the starter, so with Aaron coming off the bench in this scenario, that I think those details, though, you can work out later. For now, this is absolutely someone you take. A massive talent to add as a former five-star prospect uh seven foot one and can run the floor super well for that size i think that's when you talk about the identity that diebler wants this team to have going forward that push the pace roll some depth really get out and transition but also stay aggressive on defense Aaron Bradshaw really fits that identity, uh, be not only because he's providing more depth at that five spot with Felix Akpara, but because he can run the floor. He has a fantastic athletic skill set as that five-star talent, and I don't think there is any reason to uh, not be really joyed at this addition if you're an Ohio State basketball fan. Yeah, you don't see a lot of Twin Towers situations in college basketball anymore with two true centers out there on the floor, but you might see a little bit of that with Aaron Bradshaw joining Felix Akpara on this team, particularly because of what you mentioned with the athleticism that both of those guys have. And you think back to two or three years ago, there was a lot of clamoring from the Ohio State fan base for needing true centers that Ohio State didn't have the talent it needed at center. And I think this is the most talented pair of centers Ohio State has had in a long time with their athletic ability, with their upside, because you, you need that in, when you think about the totality of the season. In the Big Ten, you certainly need to have quality center play because it, it's a league that's always had really good centers, and that's something where Ohio State has had trouble at times and that it's sometimes struggled to match up with the teams that have really good centers. But when you project forward to March and you're playing against a lot of teams that are going to be smaller, you need to be athletic. You need to be able to space the floor. You can't, you see a lot of times where teams, well, then again, Purdue did make the, the championship game with Zach Eady this year, but you've seen a lot of examples of teams where when they're driven around, you know, their post play, they've struggled in March. And so I think, you pair that with Jake Diebler's identity. It's very important for Ohio State to have bigs who are athletic, who are versatile. And I think pairing Aaron Bradshaw with Felix Akpara is a pretty ideal pairing for Ohio State at that position. Absolutely. And, you know, it's not just running the floor. There is some limited shooting potential with Aaron Bradshaw. I think that he showed as a freshman four or 14 from three, you know, that's not a whole lot of takes, but still enough makes that you can say there's a little inkling there. But even if it's just mid range, you know, I think the ability for a five to just make a baseline jumper, make an elbow shot. If you get the ball on a hot on a screen, you know, after a screen, there's different elements of just a little mid range shooting touch that can help space the floor when you're in that position. And again, Aaron Bradshaw is just so athletic enough to take advantage of some of those mismatches he's going to have. Uh, you, I think he could even play the four if they wanted to put him and Felix on the floor at the same time. That uh, that, that little Twin Towers uh, maybe kind of a deal, the Ohio State version. But uh, I, 
what I would expect is for him and Felix to rotate at center and then you have a more athletic four given the style they want to play. But it is an option, especially if against some of these bigger, more physical Big Ten lineups. Moving forward, there are still needs in the portal for Ohio State, but this has been a great first couple steps for Jake Diebler between getting Nietzsche Johnson and Aaron Bradshaw. I think the top need still to address is on the wing. You need scoring, you need shooting in particular to replace some of what Jamison Battle gave you i don't think you're going to find another jameson battle i mean jameson had a career year you're talking about a guy who shot you know almost 44 percent from three at that four spot that's pretty rare but you need someone who can shoot uh and provide a scoring presence out there the wing is still the top priority, I think, in the transfer portal that Ohio State needs to address. And then another guard. They need more depth at guard, even retaining Taysen Chapman, adding Michi Johnson Jr., the loss of Roddy Gale Jr., the loss of Bowen Harmon, the loss of Scotty Middleton, who's kind of both a guard and a wing. He played more wing, but still a guard depth, right? You need a one or a two to come off the bench, handle the ball be another shooter probably. So those are still the two needs that Ohio State will have to address going forward. But man, it's been a pretty rocking start here and some great momentum for Jake Diebler with this pickup. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, this one with Aaron Bradshaw in particular shows something about Jake Diebler's recruiting prowess because with Michi Johnson, he's a guy who'd already been at Ohio State, already had that established relationship. As soon as Michi Johnson entered the transfer portal, Ohio State was the favorite to land him. As soon as Ohio State landed Michi Johnson, they were the favorite to land Marcus Johnson because Marcus is his cousin and they had a close relationship with that family that clearly has been rekindled since Jake Diebler became the head coach. But to go get a guy in Aaron Bradshaw who's from New Jersey, who played at Kentucky, who Ohio State didn't really recruit that much coming out of high school, to be able to get into that recruitment and win that battle of the transfer portal, I think that shows you something about Jake Diebler's ability to work the transfer portal. And you know, I know our Josh Paloha put out the stat earlier today. If, you, if you're going off high school recruiting rankings here, Jake Diebler has now landed two five-star recruits in Marcus Johnson and Aaron Bradshaw. Chris Holtman landed zero across his entire tenure at Ohio State. And so uh, we're, we're seeing uh, you know, the first steps of what we need to see from Jake Diebler in terms of taking things up a notch on the recruiting trail. Like you said, still a couple of needs to fill. So still need to go get a couple more quality players on the transfer portal here. I think, you know, certainly one we have our eye on is Matt Aloko, the guard from Princeton. He just made an official visit to Ohio State this past weekend. So Ohio State still very much in the running for him as that potential second guard addition from the transfer portal. And then, like you said, probably looking for, you know, another wing, ideally one of a little more size who can play uh, the three or the four. Uh, to fill that last spot. Yeah, I think Adu Thiero is a name to watch there for Ohio State, someone they've been in on, but you know, still early enough in the process that there's going to be ebbs and flows to this. I, I think Aaron Bradshaw was a name even down low that kind of emerged for a while. You kind of, were kind of hearing Kerry Booth from Notre Dame might be a guy they were looking at, um, and, and then Bradshaw kind of really just took off at the end of last week, took the visit to Ohio State over the weekend, uh, and then he, we see the commitment on Monday. So Jake Diebler's been working fast on some of these I, I think it could even be a guy that we haven't heard of yet that fills that wing need for ohio state but i think mataloka would be a great place to next place to go um and in terms of adding what you want in terms of a shooter and having a little bit of length there it's six four playing so you know doing some things in the backcourt um that would be another great thing to add and plus that experience too you know Bradshaw is a younger player he'll, he'll be a sophomore this year so you get three more years of eligibility with him uh, Aloko will be entering his last year here so uh, some more experience to kind of help round out the roster in terms of that balance of youth and experience uh, I think that is a great next step if they can ultimately lock up his commitment Big starts of a week all the way around for Ohio State basketball. Ohio State women's basketball also making two big transfer additions here to start off a week on Sunday, landing a commitment from former Oregon guard Chance Gray, who was the number seven overall prospect in her recruiting class. So a big get there for the Buckeyes uh, to shore up that backcourt after losing J.C. Sheldon and Celeste Taylor, who are both about to get picked in the WNBA draft tonight. Also on Monday, landing a, a big addition from their own Kentucky forward, A.J. Petty, who averaged more than 10 rebounds per game last year for the Wildcats 
And that was a massive need for the Ohio State women uh, coming into this transfer portal cycle because uh, rebounding was a big problem for the Buckeyes last year. They did not have a single player average more than 6.3 rebounds per game. And so it was a huge need for the Buckeyes to bring in a veteran uh, post player who could help them shore up their rebounding. And I think they certainly did that on Monday by landing A.J. Petty from Kentucky. A a busy time of of roster movement here, Andy, uh, just in general of Ohio State sports. Uh, The the college football transfer portal, of course, is going to open on Tuesday, and so we certainly expect some roster movement both ways for Ohio State football. As you mentioned, Ohio State uh, men's basketball still looking to add a couple more transfer pieces. Ohio State women's basketball still likely to add one or more one or one or two more transfers as well. And so a lot for us to cover here in the second half of April. And we'll be covering it all over on 11warriors.com. And we'll be back here for more uh, press coverage, real pod Wednesdays later in the week as well to talk about everything that's happening. Thank you for joining us.